Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder Channel and welcome to this podcast series on home heating. This is a subject we get a lot of inquiries from and a lot of people are very confused by the subject. They don't know which way to turn. There's either not enough information out there or there's too much information out there. And of course, a lot of that information is given to you by people who have got vested interests. So let me start by saying that I have no commercial skin in the game, if you like. I'm not sponsored by anybody even though people suspect me of being sponsored by big oil and things like that i really am just an independent installer of heating i've been at it for many years and although i'm not an academic i've written a few books and i hope that i can guide you through some of the intricacies and give you an honest appraisal because i think that in many ways is what's missing at the moment in fact i was just contacted by somebody the other day who was writing an article on the problems of overzealous salesmen when they come into your home and they're trying to sell you solar panels or insulation or heat pumps or any of the other many things that are available today for the average homeowner who doesn't want to become an expert on home heating it's a question of which way you go now i would say that the camp is kind of divided because there are people that want to save the planet and there are also people that want to save their bank accounts if you like they want to lower the cost of home heating now those two things are not mutually exclusive you can of course lower the cost of your home heating and and reduce your carbon emissions but really it's a question of how much investment you have to make in order to achieve that now the government is at the moment at the time of recording this podcast offering five thousand pounds to anybody that gets rid of their boiler and installs a heat pump and as laudable as this might seem you think okay this is a sensible move it is beset with pitfalls because whenever the government gets involved in and i'm talking about any government by the way it can be a labor government tory government or any other former government you you can think of whenever they get involved in this business of incentivizing home heating or anything like insulation solar panels you name it it produces this boom bust effect and what it means is that a lot of companies will rush into the business companies that often have no real experience in that particular sector but they will see an opportunity there they will see a lot of lovely government grants that they can mop up and they just enter the business without any real expertise without the training without the the history and the experience that it takes to operate in this sector and of course when those grants dry up and the game is over those companies disappear with alarming regularity and I've known many many cases where people have had heat pumps it may be solar panels whatever it is and a few years later they've gone back to the company because they've got some kind of problem and the company no longer exists and nobody else wants to take the job over because that's one of the problems is that if you have a bad job done you try to get somebody to put it right very very difficult so we look at something like heat pumps for example and people have had heat pumps installed and then they found that there's a real shortage of engineers out there who can service those heat pumps or repair them if god forbid they break down let's start with the basics let's start with home insulation because i think that's a very good place to begin there have been a lot of grants given for home insulation and a lot of people have had their cavity walls filled or they've had loft insulation put in or they've even had external wall insulation put in now the thing about insulation is what we're trying to do here is slow down the flow of heat out of the house heat will always travel from warm to cold never the other way around we have heat in the house the outside temperature falls and that heat rushes to the outside and of course the insulation is slowing that process down it won't stop it it will slow it down so you could insulate a house to the nth degree but if you weren't putting any kind of heat into it from some form or another in the end the house would be as cold as the outside where do we get heat from we get heat from heating appliances this computer i'm running at the moment is chucking out a fair amount of heat just to keep cool we get heat from solar gain we get heat from the people in the house and things like cooking and washing and ironing and and even putting the television on produces a bit of heat 
If your insulation is not sufficient, that heat will rapidly disappear to the outside. So if you could insulate your house to the extent that they do in a passive house, for example, you may be able to rely largely on the solar gain from the house. That would be the sunshine pouring through the windows, even on a winter's day, warming the house up. And if you've got good insulation there, you would find that you needed hardly any heating at all. In fact, you may get away with none it depends whether you're willing to put on a jumper or something like that and that's the other thing a lot of people expect their houses to be toasty warm they expect to walk around in the middle of the winter with uh, just a t-shirt on or something like that and stay warm nowadays the camp again is divided into people that are happy to heat their house around the clock 24 7 if you like at a very low temperature and those that like a little bit more heat and just want to boost the heat put the heat into the house when they need it and turn it off when they don't and personally I'm one of those people that likes to bring the house up to temperature when I'm using it and I don't really care what happens to it when I'm not using it and when I go to bed at night I like the house to be relatively cool so when we're looking at heating, here comes the first problem. The government is starting to encourage us to have low temperature heating. In fact, they're saying that all new builds are going to have a heating system that is capable of being run at low temperatures. And when I'm talking about low temperatures, maybe talking about 50 degrees Celsius, as opposed to what a lot of heating systems run at at the moment is, say, 70 degrees Celsius. Now, as you lower the temperature, you increase the efficiency of the appliance. So whether it's a condensing boiler or a heat pump the lower the temperature the more efficiency you can get out of the appliance so it seems like a good idea and to some extent it is but of course if you've got a low temperature you either need larger radiators or you need underfloor heating because if you've only got 50 celsius coming out or even less than that in some cases we may be talking about as little as 35 degrees but if you've got that then you need large heat emitters either spreading the heat over the floor area as in underfloor heating or larger radiators or even skirting heating which is basically a convector heater that runs all the way around the room so anything like that will work but if you haven't got that you're going to find it very difficult to heat your house at those low temperatures so if for example somebody's recommending that you have a heat pump put in and they're saying to you no no you can run it on your existing radiators that may be true but it's very unlikely to be true and what i would suggest you do in those situations is turn your boiler down in the winter turn your boiler down to around so that the the flow temperature Temperature. you can see it on many boilers have got a readout there and you can see if you get that flow temperature down to about say 50 degrees maybe 45 degrees and just see whether you feel warm enough and you'll have to leave it on you have to leave it on all day and all night to achieve that but if you can do it and you're happy with that you may find that that's the best way for you to heat your home however if you're like me and you just want to use your house when you're in you want it to be hot when you're out you don't really care and when you go to bed at night you want it to be a lot cooler then this idea of heating your house to a constant temperature 24 7 is not going to appeal to you if you're having a heat pump or something like that you have to get used to the idea that you will be running it for longer in other words 24 7 you don't switch it off you let the controls do the job and if you're having a condensing boiling you're trying to get the maximum efficiency out of that then you run that as low as possible for as long as possible now with a condensing boiler that's a combination boiler which is a boiler that produces instantaneous hot water in other words when you turn the tap on the boiler lights up you don't have a cylinder or any stored hot water then in that situation it doesn't really matter when you run your central heating at a lower temperature because the boiler hot water temperature is controlled separately by a separate knob so you can quite happily have the radiators at a low temperature and the water coming out of your taps at say something like 60 degrees celsius if however you've got a hot water cylinder and you're trying to run your boiler at a colder temperature at a cooler temperature say again 50 degrees celsius 
you will find that the water is a good deal colder. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because you just mix a little bit less cold water with it so that if you're having a bath or something like that you probably don't put in very much cold water at all. But of course that means that you're going to deplete the reserves faster because you're not mixing in a bit of cold water. You're using the water straight out of the cylinder if you're having a shower or a bath and you may find that you're running out of water a lot faster than you would. The other problem you've got to look at is Legionnaire's disease because because Legionnaire's disease exists because the bacteria form on the insides of pipes, shower heads and things like that. If the temperature isn't sufficient and we're talking about 60 degrees Celsius, then that bacteria will thrive and it can cause serious illness, even fatalities. So it's essential that if you're running a hot water system that you have a period, one period or maybe even two periods a week where you turn that hot water up and you turn it up to something over 60 degrees Celsius and just let that kill the bacteria that's in the system so very important you do that now there are some sophisticated boilers and sophisticated systems out there now that will give you these separate hot water temperatures they will give you a temperature for a cylinder by a separate flow to the cylinder and they will also give you a different temperature to the central heating radiators or the underfloor heating or whatever so look out for those boilers which give you two separate heating temperatures a hot water temperature and a heating temperature not in the way that they do it with a combi boiler but for stored water so it's an important thing we're going to put some links about those boilers and they will be coming more and more common because that's another one of the recommendations that the government's making is that they have better control over temperatures in hot water and in radiators and central heating generally so that's a lot to take in but it just gives you an idea of the, the the basic principles involved in this so then we start looking at what appliance is best for you 